What's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of Meal Prep. Today here in Austin, Texas, it is cold outside. It's about 32 degrees. Now I know that may not be cold for some of you, but for me living here in Austin, it's cold. Now I'm from South Jersey, so I do know what cold weather is. I, I've had my fair share of shoveling the snow and stuff. That's why I don't live there anymore. So when I think back to like, what did I eat during those cold times growing up in South Jersey with the family? My dad used to make this really good pot roast and it had potatoes and like peppers and onions and carrots. Well, I used to pick the carrots out, but <laughs> it had all this good stuff in it with a nice kind of like gravy sauce on it. Now lately, my best friend has been making a Yankee pot roast and I've been loving that as well. So I'm gonna take that version of that pot roast, I'm gonna take my dad's pot roast, I'm gonna put them together, put my spin on it, and we're gonna make a Yankee pot roast stew slash soup. It's gonna be hearty, it's gonna be warm, it's gonna be delicious. Are you ready to get started? Cause I'm hungry. Let's do this. So I got four and a half pounds of beef eye of round roast. What constitutes a roast having an eye? I'm just confused on that. Anyway, so this cut of meat is not very like uh, fatty. It doesn't have a lot of the, you know, the marbleization strains going through it. It does have one big, you know, slab of fat right here, which I'm gonna cut off to make it even leaner. So this meat, we're gonna cook it on low, but only for about four hours in the crock pot. Otherwise it starts to get tough. Now, before I put this in the crock pot, I wanna get a nice good sear on it. So I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, and I'm gonna sear it on all sides. Let's go do that. And then we can get started on everything else. It's gonna be good and it's gonna be warm. So I have my cast iron skillet on the stove preheating. So that way when I put the meat down, it gets a nice good like sear on it. And the trick to this is Put the meat down and don't touch it for about three minutes. And then you're gonna flip it to the other side, cook it for about three minutes. Then, you know, like this way, this way, this way, this way. We wanna cook it on all four sides to make sure that we really seal those juices inside. Now, if you don't have a cast iron skillet, I suggest going buying one. They're not that expensive. You can get them at Walmart for about 20 bucks or so. But I'm telling you, the way it cooks your food and puts a nice good sear on it, it just takes me back cooking with my grandma. My grandma and Gracie, that is. Now, she always had a cast iron skillet. She would cook some cornbread up in there. She cooked some sausages and whatever you could think about was cooked in that skillet. And I'm telling you that the... the, the Hello, Father. Can I speak to Mother real quick, please? No, uh, real quick? I mean, why have you got me so fast? Because I'm on the phone? No, because I'm in the middle of recording a video. Oh, okay. That's more like it. Mom! You get it? The phone. So you want to talk to you real quick. Hey, babe. Hey, Mom. Yeah? So what type of food did your grandma used to cook in her cast iron skillet? Because she always had a cast iron skillet from what I can remember growing up. She cooked all kind of food, but one in particular I like her hot cake cornbread flirts. Oh. And they, they were made with corn. Okay. They were they were made like, uh, they look like a, a, a pancake made out of cornbread. Okay. And corn. And boy, did she cook a mean pan of fried chicken. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, fried chicken good, is good in the, uh, in the skillet too, but. That was some good old eating before we knew that we need to eat a little bit more healthier. Oh, okay. You name it, she made it. All right. All right. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Cooking with a cast iron skillet versus like a regular pan is totally different experience. You will not get that same like crust on your food. You will not get the same kind of like flavors. Like when I cook fajitas, I have to cook with a cast iron skillet. It just does something to the vegetables. It is the bomb dig. No, we don't say bomb digging anymore. It's just, it just get, invest in a cast iron skillet, you won't be sorry. All right, I think it's hot enough now. Let's go ahead and put some salt and pepper on this and some olive oil and then we're we're cooking and rolling here. Um, I could leave this on here for flavor, but I wanna be as lean as possible, so I'm gonna take this off. So now that I've trimmed off the fat, just take a little bit of olive oil or grapeseed oil and a little salt and pepper 
and then we're gonna put it right into the cast iron pan. All right, so that's about two tablespoons of oil. I have one teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt. And I have one teaspoon of black pepper. I'm gonna get in there with my hand and I'm gonna massage the meat to make sure that everything is evenly distributed all around. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the stove and put this in the cast iron skillet and watch it sizzle. Now don't be tempted to flip these too early. Let them sit there for about three minutes on each side before turning. Otherwise you won't get that good sear on it. As you can see, we have a good sear on all six sides, including top and bottom. So let's go ahead and take this off. We, wanna, we don't wanna cook it too long, but uh, this is gonna be good. Yeah. That's looking good. That's how you want it to look. Now you don't have to do this step, but if you want the extra added flavor, go ahead and spend the extra few minutes in doing this. Otherwise you could just throw it into the crock pot like we're about to do in a few seconds. Let's go ahead and prep our vegetables now. We're not gonna put them into the last like hour to an hour and a half of cooking, but we can go ahead and get that all done and out of the way. Let's start with our potatoes. We got a lot of them. I got roughly about four pounds right here. Let's see if we're gonna use them all. I'm gonna make them bite size, cause like I said, we're making a stew type of soup. So it's not like your normal pot roast where you leave them like big chunks. We want them bite size. All right, let's get to chopping. So you want them about that big. I'm meal prepping for more than one person. When you meal prep yourself, make sure that you can cut these you know, portions down depending on how many people you're cooking for. I cook for three people, so. So that's three pounds of potatoes cut up exactly. Let's go ahead and get everything actually in the crock pot so that can be cooking and then we can come back and prep the rest of our vegetables. All right, so let's go ahead and get everything set up and get the meat in the crock pot. I wanna go ahead and add my seasonings, my sauces, and my onions, all right? Let's go ahead and add some beef stock. I got the unsalted version. That way I can control how much salt is going actually into the stew. That's one problem with soups, they're really salty. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add my seasonings. I'm doing one teaspoon of Himalayan pink salt, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of thyme, a half a teaspoon of garlic, a half a teaspoon of ancho chili pepper, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a half a teaspoon of allspice. Now I'm gonna add some water. It's actually 32 ounces, so it's really equal part. So I have two onions here. I have a red onion and then a Spanish onion. I just like to mix. You can use whatever onions you like, but I'm gonna keep it a little variety. Let's go ahead and add this Heinz chili sauce. This is like a secret ingredient that my best friend does. So this is one of those things that I'm taking from that recipe and you know, kind of you know, taking from my own. So let's go ahead and add this. We can go ahead and prep our vegetables and clean up our area. That's really all we have left to do. It's a pretty simple recipe. The only other things that I did not add that I need to add right now are some bay leaves, a handful of garlic. I'm gonna put about two, three bay leaves in there. Then I'm gonna put about six, seven cloves of garlic in here, depending on size. So you wanna be mindful 
not to take the top off or be tempted to take the top off and smell it and stir it. Every time you take the top off, you add about 30 minutes of cook time to it. So once you put that top on it, leave it. So my little spin on this from my dad and my best friend was adding some allspice and a little bit of cinnamon. Now that's going to take it in a whole totally different direction, but still meld those flavors that they had in there and take it up a notch. All right, this is going to be good. Let's go ahead and chop the rest of our vegetables up. And then after that, there's nothing to do but to come down and add them in about two and a half, three hours. All right, so vegetables, I have an orange bell pepper, a red bell pepper, I have a jalapeno, then I have about four stalks of celery, and then over here, I have some washed off carrots, the petite carrots, I'm gonna just cut these in half so they can be bite-sized, and then we have some cherry tomatoes. That's a whole package, about 10 and a half ounces, and this was like a 12 ounce pack. So let's get the chopping. If you're liking this video so far go ahead and give it a thumbs up go ahead and smash it it'll really help me out more than you know and if you're not already subscribed go ahead and do so turn on that bell notification so when I upload you'll notify you don't want to miss out like I said in 2018 we got a lot more content coming your way and it's not always going to be in the kitchen so you don't want to miss out all right <laughs> Now remember, you can leave the seeds in or you can take the seeds out depending on how hot you want it. If you just want the flavor of the jalapeno or if you want a little spicy, I'm gonna do half and half. Leave half of them in and take half of them out. All right, I'm running out of space here on my cutting board, so let's take some of this off and put it to the side. Now I could leave these whole, but I think I'm going to cut them in half. It's up to you. That's, your, that's a personal choice, but I'm going to cut them in half. All right, so all my vegetables are cut up. So nothing left to do but wait for a couple hours and be right back. All right? Hey, if you like this shirt, express yourself. Someone sent it to me. You can go to coffeeshirtcode.com. They're going to be launching pretty soon in the next couple of weeks. Go ahead and enter your email address, and that way when they open, you get notified. But I, I really like the shirt. Got a cool little coffee logo on it. All right, it's been about three hours. Let's go ahead and take the meat out. We're now, when we take it out, we're not going to cut into it right away. We're going to let it rest for about five minutes. In the meantime, we can put the rest of the vegetables and potatoes inside. <laughs> All right, so we're not going to touch that right now. We'll let that rest for about five minutes, but we can go ahead and start adding our potatoes and the rest of our vegetables. This is a complete meal. You don't need to add really anything else. So I'll let the meat rest for about five, 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and cut it, and then we're going to put it back in the crock pot. All right, let's go ahead and put that meat back in there. I'll be back in about an hour or so to check on the pot roast stew. Now, I did take about four to five cups of the liquid out to make room for all those veggies and potatoes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cook that on the stove add about one to two tablespoons of cornstarch to it, make it into a little thicker gravy sauce, and then pour that back onto the pot roast. So I think this is gonna be good. I had a little sample of it, and boy, was it tasty. Now, you could cook all this in a Dutch oven. That's the way my best friend does it. That's the way my dad did it. But I want it to be a little bit different, so I cooked it in the crock pot. The Dutch oven might give you a little bit more room, depending on how much meat you're using, how much vegetables and potatoes that you're using as well. So it's up to you. Crock pot, Dutch oven, it doesn't matter. It's gonna come out great. All right, it's been about an hour and a half. I did come down about 30 minutes ago to check it. The potatoes still weren't quite done yet, so I did let them cook a little bit longer. I took a fork and I tried to stick a fork through a potato. It was still a little 
too al dente for me, so I had to let it cook a little bit longer. In the meantime, what I've gone ahead and did was I took out the pot rolls and the vegetables and put it into a bowl right here. As you can see, the meat has started to break down and is becoming like, oh my gosh, it's just falling apart. It's gonna be so good. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna make the gravy. Cause I don't really like a watery soup. If you do, that's that's great. That this will be the end of your cooking process. But for me, I wanted a little bit more of a gravy substance, okay? Remind me of those good old days back home. All right, so I have some cornstarch right here. I'm gonna use about two tablespoons. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's, yeah, maybe two and a half, two and a half tablespoons. All right, I'm gonna take some liquid from the crock pot. And pour it right over the cornstarch. And all we do is gonna sit here and just mix this up. Now this is gonna help to make a good, nice little paste. Now you could do this with water, but why dilute the flavor anymore? Just use your broth. Just make sure there's nothing in there, like no vegetables. All right, so I'm gonna go over to the stove where I took out most of the liquid and I put it in the pan. I had the pan on high. I'm gonna pour this into it, let it cook for a few minutes, and it's gonna thicken up. And I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna pour that all over the meat. It's gonna be delicious. All right, so the gravy has been cooking for about four to five minutes now. Let's go get it off the stove and add it back to the pot roast so then it can really become a soup because it's looking good and I'm really hungry. I'm ready to try this. It's been, you know, hours now. All right, let's go get it. Now, if it's cold outside and you want to warm up, you need to try a cup of this or a bowl of this or you need to try some of this. Oh my goodness, this looks so good. Look at that. If you wanted to, you could add some, you know, spinach or kale to this as well so you can get some green vegetables, but you do really have carrots and you have bell peppers and celery and onion and garlic and jalapeno. So you really do have a lot of good vegetables in there already. This is ready to uh, serve up. So let's go ahead and get a bowl and try this up. I'm going in for a bite. Whew, that's a little hot. I don't want to burn my lip or my tongue or my insides. The thing I like about making your own type of soup or stew at home is that you can control what goes into it. So my son's not been feeling well the last past couple of days. So I went and got him a couple of things of soup out at the store. So I got him this brand right here of chicken noodle soup. And for one serving, now this little thing is actually two servings, is almost 800 milligrams of sodium. So you eat this whole thing, that's 1600 milligrams of sodium. Now for most of us, we're on a 2000 milligram uh, per day of sodium intake. If you're African American, it's even less, it's closer to 1500. Everything you eat, everything you take in, you drink, has sodium in it. So eating something like this, which looks pretty good, you know, Campbell's makes it all good, whatever, is not good for you. So making this at home, I've greatly reduced the amount of salt intake in it. A, my beef broth was unsalted. I didn't add any kind of pre-seasoned or, you know, salt packets, so I added the salt into it. Again, keep your sodium level down, make your own soup. If you didn't see last week's videos, I posted right here and one in the description, I did a guacamole chicken burger. Whoa, was that good. And then I have some other videos that I think you might like. And if you watch this video to this point, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and like it. It really does help me out more than you know. And if you're not subscribed already, go do so. I don't know what you're waiting for. You wanna be notified when I post content? Make sure you hit that little bell notification. And lastly, I just wanna say thank you for all the people that have been watching me, leaving comments, letting me know about your progress. I really do enjoy interacting with you guys, so please keep leaving the comments below. Any suggestions about future videos? and I will do my best to try to create them. Other than that, guys, there's nothing left but to stay focused, stay positive, and keep it moving. See you in the next one. Good day, everybody.